Hey everyone, welcome back. Hopefully everybody had a good Christmas and New Year's. Guess who's on the jack stands again? <laughs> Thank God this time it's not because it's something broke, but we're just doing finally things that I wanted to do. So today we're finally gonna get to getting the brakes done. But not only are we gonna do the brakes, but we're also gonna up upgrade the, the rotors and the brake pads. As you can see, uh, I just put the old ones back on when I had the issue with the CV axle, which, uh, by the way, guys, I've driven the car around. Yes, I do drive the car. I know I should record me driving the car around, but I don't. I just like to enjoy it myself. I do drive it, and uh, I'm happy to report that everything seems okay so far. But um, it's time to uh, upgrade the brake pads, like I said. Brake pads and brake rotors all around. But I also want to do something else too. Um, I've done it to the Blazer. Uh, shame that I have not done it on the Cavalier yet on my daily driver. Tends to be uh, taking a seat in the back burner lately. The passenger side window stopped working so I kind of rolled it up and stopped it from moving there. But I've also have been having an issue in the mornings where it's, when it's really cold, like really, really cold. I'll turn the headlights on and the headlights won't come on. So I'll put the parking brake down and I've been driving to work with uh, the daytime running light. So I think I've solved that issue. I didn't want to record it. Uh, I don't know if you guys like content on the Cavalier or not, but if you guys do, let me know and I'll start recording it. But what I did is I, I switched out the old um, turn signal and headlight switch. It wasn't too hard to do. It is involved because, uh, like I learned today, you need to disconnect the battery for any kind of work you do. Uh, this kept touching like brass, and it kept honking. And uh, after a little while, it started getting annoying. But um, this side is very important because this turn signal switch also has—you can't see it, but it also has the, the cruise control on it. Well, I mean, you can see it right there. So. I swapped that out, the headlights turned back on, but it hasn't been cold enough for me to check and see, so I'm gonna do it tomorrow morning. And uh, I'm gonna check also on Monday. Today is Friday. I uh, unfortunately, finally, the vids got up to me after two years, and uh, I was down for the count for about eight days, boys. It wasn't good, I mean, it felt like the flu, but. That's all I got to say about that. Much better. All right, let's get started on this. So like I said, I want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to empty out the brake fluid. I'm going to siphon it out, clear it out, and then I'm going to clear the lines on all four corners of the car. That way, we have fresh brake fluid in the car, along with the fresh brake pads, and rotors. All right, so I kind of set myself up right here. Put some rags down, put that empty bottle right there, and I have a giant syringe that I got from uh, the old Wish app. And I got some of this uh, clear tubing from uh, the hardware store. It can be used any any kind of a uh, tubing, actually, as long as it's just big enough that it'll fit in it. And what I'm gonna do, take this cap off here, put it down, I see my have my rag right there so in case I spill anything it'll catch it and I'm gonna start siphoning it now so hopefully it'll work. Yeah, kind of dirty brake fluid. Right, one right there. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get more out of it. Show it in there. And here comes some more. Yeah, that's kind 
Ryan. Just afraid of pulling it out too much. <clears throat> now I did buy some more brand new brake fluid. I bought some cheap uh, AutoZone brand type. That way I can flush some of it through. But then I got some of that this good, uh, good um, Bosch brand type of brake fluid. I'll show it to you guys in a minute. But it seems to be getting most of it out. Check that out, guys. Uh, safe to say that no one's probably ever changed the brake fluid on this car. Along with a bunch of other things that nobody's done to it. But, if I have the time and the money, I'm gonna get her done. Alright guys, I kind of did start a little bit late. I burned too much uh, daylight. Got a flashlight on it right there. And as you can see on the inside, I got most of what I could out. I'll show you guys uh, the bottle right now of the brake fluid inside of it. But as you can see from the flashlight, it's mainly empty in there. It's a little dirty, but whatever fluid that did stay in there like that, I think I'll be able to flush it out, hopefully. So this was the brake fluid that was inside the reservoir that I got out. Uh, pretty dirty. Not too good, guys. Not good at all. But, that's why we're doing what we're doing. Let me clear this stuff out. And put some of that good, fresh brake fluid. Now, the brake fluid that I got for it. Just put this down right here. Is this stuff right here? Bam! Some of this Bosch brake fluid saw. So, uh, got on the old uh, YouTubes and the interwebs and started searching what's the best brake fluid for the Cobalt and the Bosch brand came out. Now it's dot three, dot four, and dot 5.1, not 5.0. I don't know what the differences are. But if you guys wanna pause it right here, you guys can read all this good stuff right here. It exceeds dot three, dot four, and dot point five standards. But it does not do dot five. Do not use dot five silicone base. Well, don't have to worry about that because we're not using it for that. We're gonna use it for its uh, dot three and dot four and possibly 5.1 properties. So the brake fluid will have a way higher boiling point as it says right here. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna be racing the car. I mean, I would like to take it to like a track day, drive around, the, you know, do a couple laps. And I just wanna know that it's not gonna overheat or what have you. But, this is the stuff right here. So if you guys are interested on it, I got it off of um, Amazon. I think it was like $11 a bottle. Try it out, let me know what you guys think. All right, so the next step I need to do is I need to take these uh, old wheels off and start the teardown process of, uh, so I take the wheels off, oh, I'll take the lug nuts off, take the wheel off. Then I'm gonna take the hardware off of uh, the caliper caliper off take the brake pads off I'll show you all the good stuff right now or what time is it 5 15 it's already dark we're gonna do this for tomorrow morning I'll see you guys in the morning
All right, guys, it is indeed the next day. Hopefully you guys like that little intermission video that I put up of the Cavalier and what was going on with it. But hopefully that issue should be solved. Today is Saturday, it's in the afternoon already. And it's time to get going again. So I need to take all the wheels off all around. Start from over there, over here, because I'm gonna start bench blading the, the brake line. So I'm gonna start the one furthest away from the brake booster. So the brake booster is always typically by the driver's side and the passenger side rear wheel is always the one furthest away so I'm gonna start from there to the back driver's side to the front passenger side and then I'm gonna do the passenger side I mean driver's side so we'll get started right now but first we gotta get the wheels off all right guys before I get too far ahead of myself here I just want to show you guys what rotors I went with I decided to go with the R1 concept front rotors and rears they're all gonna, four gonna be uh, slotted, not slotted, drilled or drilled. Uh, I felt that slotted was best for me, but I did not go with their brake pads. Uh, not this time. I decided that I, I'd rather go with the, the power stop brake pads. I felt like they'd be better for my application. What's really cool about these guys is that they uh, show you how to do the bedding process right there in the box. So when they're brand new brake pads, It'll show you how to break in the new brake pads and rotors and all the steps are right there. So you gotta do five aggressive stops at 40 to 10, five aggressive stops from 35 to five, and then let it cool down for five minutes. And after that, the bedding process should be complete. Now, whether you guys believe it or not, it's entirely up to you guys, but I do believe that when you bed them in, they last a lot longer. So I did do that process with the Cavaliers brake pads when I swapped them out. I did go with OEM brake pads and OEM rotors and drums in the back. And I felt like they lasted me a lot longer than the ones on the blazer. So hopefully they'll last me a long time on the cobalt. All right, so I've gone ahead and uh, taken all four wheels off. So now the car is sitting up on the jack stands with the wheels underneath it for a little safety. And I'm gonna be using the one man bleeder like I told you guys before. So if any of you guys have used it before, let me know down in the comments. Tell me what you guys think, if it's good or bad. I seem to like it. I have no issues with it. So let's try it out right now. I'm gonna do a little time lapse on it. Or I might just go straight. I was gonna do a time lapse, but now nah, I'm just gonna do it straight like that. So what you gotta do is if you have this little dust cover, take it off. Like so. Come off like that. And then this kit, it comes with its own little uh, hose and little tip on it. And then you gotta put the tip inside the a little bleeder valve right there. Put it in. Oh, sorry if my hand's in the way. And then just loosen the valve, like so. And it's ready to go. But before I do that, I need to fill up the brake reservoir. All right, I'm back. So I filled it up. I opened the little valve. I use a 10 millimeter wrench to open it up. There we go. Make sure the little needle is in there nice and tight. And hopefully me pressing the brakes will push out all the old stuff. So here we go, a little live as we do it type of deal. Now if I remember correctly, hopefully you guys can hear me. I gotta press on the brakes real nice and slow. Don't mash it. All right, so the reservoir did take some. You can see the, like the old brake fluid coming out of it. And at the very bottom of the reservoir, you can see that it's filling up in there. So I'm gonna keep doing this until it goes clear. But this time I am gonna do a little time lapse on it.
I know it says it's a one-man bleeder. Maybe I should have gotten somebody to help me out a little bit because look at the bottles already leaking out. I better get something to stop that leak. <laughs> so this brings me to my next point. It's always good to have a little catch can. I know I didn't show you guys in the beginning of it, but I did have a little catch can underneath it. Um, maybe 15 pumps is too much. I'll probably shoot for 10 pumps at a time until it starts coming out clear. So I already closed the valve and I need to empty out that little bottle right there. All right guys, the reservoirs are cleared out as you can see, I cleaned it up again. Uh, maybe 15 pumps, like I said, it was way too much. Uh, one thing to consider is that when you guys are in a panic, like I was, to stop the leak, don't lose your 10 millimeter. I literally just spent right now about 15 minutes looking for it and it was sitting probably like two feet from me underneath a napkin dummy me all right here we go again let me open it up awesome the thing to consider when you guys are doing this keep an eye on the brake reservoir make sure you guys don't run it dry because the last thing you guys need is air in there so let's go at it again so i just loosened it up let's do another time lapse i'm gonna do like 10 pumps All right guys, so I did two sets of 10, and if you guys can see, the line is now coming clear somewhat. I might do it one more little set, but I think it's pretty much full and it's clear. So we'll probably stop right there then. I'm not even gonna keep going. I'm gonna go on to the other three, but I won't bore you guys with that. So when you're done, make sure you guys close off the end that you're at, so that way no air gets inside, and just move along. All right, so I went all around all four calipers and I used that one man bleeder and this is my final result. All this came out of it. So along with what came out last night, let me put this down real quick. What came out last night in the reservoir, that's what came out the calipers. And here's that little one man bleeder. It's really good, but I don't fully trust it. So I'm gonna employ the help of my oldest to help me bleed it like we normally do with the two-man bleed. Might as well do it if I have the help, right? All right, so I just finished up on the driver's side and uh, this is <clears throat> the end result. So I had my son pump it five times and then on the fifth one, I tell him to hold it and then I would tighten the, the bleeder valve so that way no air would get in. I did it all around, all four tires, or all four calipers, excuse me, and got it done. And I pretty much finished this a uh, quart of a uh, Bosch brake fluid stuff is really good. So I did go through all of the cheap bottles on brand uh, Dot three and Ended up using the majority of this uh, Bosch brand type. So hopefully my brake should have a higher boiling point I doubt that I'll ever get to that point, but it's a good little peace of mind. So on to the next Taking off the calipers So since I'm a glutton for punishment I'm gonna start off with the side I hate the most, which will be the rears. It is really difficult to get to these um, uh, caliper bracket bolts. For whatever reason, they put a bunch of stuff in the way. So, I'm gonna start with that side first. I'm not saying it's the hardest side, because the front could be hard too, but I'm gonna start with the side that it annoys me the most. the 
Yes, I did. Perfect. It's that top one that gives me the most trouble. The other one that gives me the most trouble is going to be this uh, Caterpillar Guide Pin. Because you have the brake line in the way and you also have the emergency brake in the way as well. So... Get these on. I've never done these before. I've never taken the calipers off for this one, at least for this coal. Any coal. Have that box at the bottom right there. So I can rest the caliper on it when it comes off. Not everything is telling me I'm fighting myself to leave my gloves on because I want to take them off. But every single time I do that, I end up getting hurt. Also release your emergency brake. So that way when the caliper comes off, <laughs> it lets go of the, the disc. I remember when I had my Z28, I did the rears. And man, that was a pain. And those of you guys that were there to watch me do it, you know who you know who you are. It was a funny day. All right, got the other bolt out. Okay. So there it is. Caliper is free. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there for a second, guys. Don't kill me, okay? Let me just get this rotor off. All right. Be right back. All right, so I kind of took it apart. And uh, I ran into a little issue already. I do not have that caliper compression tool. So, <laughs> that's going to put a little stop to the rears for today. But not to worry. Because I've uh, already remedied the issue. Thank goodness. I ordered it off of uh, Amazon. I just did it right now. Left purchase today. And it's like... A dollar a piece. I'm losing money if I don't buy this. <laughs> it's a good tool to have anyways. So I'm gonna have to start with um, the fronts I guess whether I like it or not until I get this uh, tool for that compression on the piston. But I am gonna clean up right here. You know I will. So let's check out the rear rotor. So didn't look too bad. I mean, besides being all rusted up, well, maybe, look at all this. Uh, yeah, it does, you know what? It does have a lot of pitting and scratches, but I do believe these are the originals. So, there's that. All right, guys, so we're going to start with the front right now. Since uh, I can't continue with the back, but I am going to clean all this crud up. And I am going to take these apart. Oop. Since I do have the tools for the tools, uh, I do have the hardware for the, the new brake pads. I will be putting them on right now. Or getting it ready. And the caliper compression tool should be here by tomorrow. And just like that with a little movie magic, it is clean. I mean, not the best. But like I always tell you guys, good enough for me. I'll clean. I even cleaned some of the boot. In there. I'll probably clean more later on or tomorrow when I start working on it, but that's good enough for now. And I will clean these up later on. Now, whoo, it's bright over there. Let's start with the front. All right, so I took the caliper off and took the rotor off right there. And I'm inspecting, looking around. It's still clean from the last time I cleaned it. 
and I'm very happy to report that everything seems to be okay with the intermittent shaft and the CV axle change. So far, so good. So that's good. Now, I was thinking about painting the caliper when I uh, was first thinking about doing this job, but I mean, if it's not factory, I'm not gonna do it. I mean, it would be nice if they were red, but they're not no Brembo's or anything like that, so. I'm just gonna keep it the way it is. But everything looks good in there so far. All right, I'm gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna start taking the, the caliper guide pins out, clean them up, clean the boots, or replace the boots if I have new ones inside the kit, right there. And start using some of that uh, caliper grease that I have right there, sitting in the sun, kind of getting soft. It's a little too hard right now to be putting on. So, I'll get started on that. Uh, if we're just taking off the caliper bracket, I was looking at it, and I am gonna have to clean the caliper glides, guides, excuse me, in there. Oh, the laziness in me just wants to leave it alone, but the OCD in me is telling me to clean everything, so quite the conundrum. Quite the conundrum indeed, so I am gonna take them apart. And I am gonna clean them up because this this will not do at all. No sir, look at that, dirty. And the new kit does come with a new boot, so there's that. So I won't bore you guys with all the cleaning details and everything on it. So I'm just gonna get her done. All right, guys, something very interesting when I was taking these apart. So on the bracket, I'm calling this side the top. If it was on the car be the top and that's the bottom one so I took the top one apart and I cleaned it up and it does have a little scratches on it as you can see right there and it does have this little cap right here which this piece was on it but the bottom one does not have that I wonder how come and it has like these little grooves on it I'm not sure if they're friction grooves you can kind of see them for the most part it looks okay so are they different parts or did somebody mess up because in the bag it does have four of these little nipples like insinuating that pine needed it to change out you know two on each side but I'm not too sure so I guess I'm gonna have to find out once I get to the driver's side but now I gotta clean the inside of these things now I'm gonna figure it out. Something with the spray bottle and this baby bottle reamer. So hopefully I get all that crap out. All right, so here we are about two hours later. I finished putting the caliper bracket back together. Um, so here's the top side again. It has a new boot. There's the old one. Here's the new one. So this one, it travels a lot smoother than when I first took it off, but it does have resistance. And I'm assuming because it has that little plunger inside of it but the other side it doesn't have it nice and easy I hope pray that this will not give me any issues where the caliper is sticking or anything like that because it'll be a waste of, of uh, brake pads and I cleaned up the caliper piston as well I cleaned up all on the inside too as much as I could but I started spraying everywhere so I had to stop so if I'm trying to get any traction today, I need to stop cleaning and start putting stuff back together because if not, I'll never see these rotors on here. So let me stop again and just like that, it's been another 10 minutes. Um, it's smooth. They're smooth. I was just uh, scaring myself like I always do. I ended up putting the new brackets on as well for the brake pads. I want to see these rotors on here already. What about you guys? All right, let me get started on that now. I'm sick of waiting. Here we go. All right, here it is, guys. All put together. I haven't uh, torqued down the, the bolts yet on the caliper guide or the caliper bracket. I'm gonna do that right now, but here it is with the, with the new rotors on it. Really excited. I can't wait to get the other three done. Uh, I probably won't bore you guys with that, but um, I'll show you guys the end product when I'm done. 
one quick little side note guys that once uh, I forgot to mention that these are coated with something called Geomet I believe from R1 Customs so this coating whatever doesn't touch the brake is going to keep the coating on it and whatever doesn't whatever does make contact is going to come off and we'll see like wherever the brake pad touches but everything else it should stay this color because it is uh, anti-corrosion so hopefully these rotors will look nice for a long time but um Oh man, I'm excited. I'm really happy. Uh, I'm gonna get started on the other ones right now. Okay, got the whole front done. Got the passenger side done. And finished up the driver side a little while ago, so time to move on to the rears. Now, I was checking on the R1 Concepts uh, website for uh, direction on as far as which way the rotors go and it says that it doesn't really matter which way they go that they you know they work both ways with the blades going that way or the blades going that way i mean the slots going that you know vice versa so i decided to just go with this way right here and uh put something around here or over here about that on their website so i'm gonna get started on the rears right now all right while well, i was waiting uh you know those few days for uh the caliber uh to come in I actually did find a couple of videos or actually one video in particular where uh, the person that was changing out his uh, rear uh, caliper brakes he used a seven millimeter wrench to turn this so I guess if you guys were in the pinch that could help out I wasn't gonna do it with the wrench that day but I decided since uh, I already had ordered the part or the tool might as well just wait for it but that's um that's a good little idea right there using a seven millimeter to um, wrench to um, turn that, turn it inward. All right, guys, time to get started on this side. All right, so I am back. I don't want to bore you guys with uh, the cleaning of the caliper uh, bracket, but I did end up cleaning everything out. The one with the plunger, which would be on this side, the left one right now, um, it is a little bit harder to travel, but it does travel a lot smoother than it did before, before I cleaned it out. And this is the other one. This one travels real nice and smooth. They both have probably about the equal amount of uh, grease inside of it, the caliper piston grease. So I'm very happy. And this one did actually have a lot of rust inside of it, but I did use that um, baby bottle reamer to get it out. So there is no more rust in there. Still a little bit of rust on the reamer. So I'm gonna put the caliper bracket down. And it is time now press that piston right there so here is the caliper tool that I was waiting for so here is that piece I, I forgot the names of them I really don't know what the names of them are but um backing plate and you have to excuse all the noise there's a giant airplane flying over me since I do live next to uh what is that, uh, Groom and Northrop or whatever it is. So you put the piece on right there, and I believe I need to use this number four to compress my piston. So these are magnetic. So all you gotta do is um, line up these holes with those right there. Bam, magnetic. All right, guys. So I already did take the cap off of my uh, brake reservoir. But I think you really don't have to do that. I've never seen it gush over, but a lot of people always tell you make sure you uh, open up the the brake reservoir before you start compressing the piston. All right, so let's see. Let's see if we can all right, guys. I don't know exactly what happened, but I, I ended up uh, turning off the camera on accident, or I don't know why. Maybe I had a phone call or something like that. But um, it cut off. So all you gotta do is just. There's a lot more comprehensive videos than what I'm doing online, to be honest with you. So take what I say with a grain of salt. But um, from what I've seen is, uh, so you line up these two little dowels and these slots right here. Grab it on like so, and then you're not loosen this thing up which will 
make the dowels catch on uh, the little grooves inside the piston and all you gotta do is start going to the right and it'll it'll start rewinding the the caliper piston back inside like it did right there so sorry I didn't record it I thought I was but I mean I probably got the phone call or something like that I wasn't paying attention and it cut off the video so passenger side is compressed now all I gotta do is install the caliper bracket I mean the rotor caliper bracket brakes and brake hardware and I'll do that maybe on a little time lapse. All right, I had a little bit of trouble with doing the, the back one as you guys saw in the time lapse, so I had to kind of stop it and I started once again once I got it on, but everything's on there. All we just got to listen is for um, that little sound. Oh, it sounds perfect. So it's just a brake pad on rotor, which you heard uh, grinding. I was just checking to make sure that I don't hear any noise from the, the brake hardware kit where it, if it might be touching like the rotor or something like that. Now all I got to do is just uh, torque it down to spec and I'm going to start on the, the driver's side but I won't obviously I won't bore you guys with that side right there since you guys already saw how I did the passenger side after that just uh, double check everything make sure everything's the torque spec front and back and then I'm going to slap the wheels on the car and then I'm going to take it out and um, break in the, the new braking rotors all right guys so it's the following day the day that would never come but it's finally done and here is the aftermath. So here are the fronts. I believe this was the passenger side right here. You can tell it has a lot of grooving on it. Here's the driver's side. And here is the brake hardware kit with the brake pads. And the brake pads, like I said before in other videos, that they weren't bad. So at least they took care of that. And here are the rears. And a little bit more worn out. I believe this is the passenger side and this is the driver's side. This side has less meat than the ones on the other side. And as far as the rotors, yeah, it was already time to go. Alright guys, so what took me the longest was uh, cleaning up the mess in the garage after everything was done. <clears throat> and um, I just put the wheels on the car right now. So this is how the car looks right now. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention to you guys that I uh, 
have <laughs> the tires finally installed under the L and F wheels. By no means are they perfect, like I told you guys before, but we weren't going for perfection. We're just going for OEM plus. So this is what it looked like. I thought this day would never come. Check out the driver's side. I still have negative camber on this side, on the front. I did buy the bolts to help that, but when I took it in to get um, the alignment done to it, the guy told me I didn't need them. I didn't need to uh, use a camber bolt on it, but I'm gonna go to a different shop. I want them to uh, fix that for me. For me, um, the stance look is not for me. Like I said, I just want OEM plus. Man, am I excited, finally. New headlights, new wheels and tires, new brake and rotors. Um, it's been a slow process, guys, for those of you who have been here since day one. Thank you guys for that. But I mean, it's getting there. We're getting to the point where uh, we might be getting close to the paint already. I still have things to fix, like the sunroof. Actually, I haven't even done the spark plugs yet. Shame on me on that, but. We'll get it done pretty soon. And then I do have uh, the trunk lift supports to do as well. Everything is sitting behind me on the workbench that I have not cleaned up in years. Every time I clean it up, something comes up like this and it just gets demolished again. Some of you guys might know what I'm talking about. But for now, it's time to break in these rotors and brakes. Uh, the only thing that I don't like is uh, the calipers. Maybe I should have painted them, but that might be another video or another project, I should say. What do you guys think? What color should I paint them? Let me know in the comments. All right, guys, so we're gonna do five aggressive decelerations at 40 miles an hour. 10 miles an hour now my speedometer is off so I need to go up to 50 and go down to 20. So we're gonna do four five of those and then five from 35 to five and then I'm gonna cool down so I'm gonna get started right now. Alright, here we go. Right, go to 50 and then Thank you. 
car needs to be realigned again. So I put the new wheels on. Small vibration. Now I'm gonna listen out for a like little break. Exactly to the T from 40 to 10, 35 to 5. Oh, I can smell those brake pads on. And it says drive slowly to cool down your brakes for five minutes. But I'm gonna let the car just cool right here. Alright, guys, if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up, please. For those of you guys that have been here since day one, thank you guys. For those of you guys that are new, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.